how to talk about numbers. In academic writing task one, you're going to have to interpret data that you're going to see in bar charts, pie charts, line graphs. So we're going to give you today some different ways that you can talk about numbers and percentages so that you can vary your vocabulary and score higher. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so in today's video, we're not going to write an entire essay together. We're going to focus on vocabulary to help you describe the number and the, the numbers and the data in the chart. So a typical question is, there, you're going to see a chart like this one right here, and the, the test is going to ask you to summarize the chart in at least 150 words. Okay, so our example chart here, we've got uh, male and female, and we have three different subjects over here. So these, this chart describes the differences between men and women in different subjects at the University of Cambridge in 2001. Now suppose, suppose you wanted to talk about, you wanted to describe how many male students were studying philosophy at Cambridge in 2001, right? So most students are going to say something really simple, really basic. There were 50 students studying philosophy at the University of Cambridge in 2001, right? 50 students. And that's correct. There's nothing wrong with that. But it's basic. And if you want to level up your score, you want to use more diverse vocabulary. So let me give you some examples of that now. Okay, so the first one, you can say the number of, right? You can say the number of male students studying philosophy at University of Cambridge in 2001 stood at 50. You can say that. You could also change this. You could just, you could say was as well. You can say the number of students was 50. That's okay too. But stood at is a higher level. That's what you want to go for. Okay, so another one using the number of. You can say the number of male students studying philosophy at University of Cambridge in 2001 totaled 50 or the same beginning of that sentence, and you can add amounted to 50, right? So we're talking about the same thing. We're, we're using, describing the same data, but we're using different ways to do that. And that diversity of vocabulary and sentence pattern is going to set you apart and help you score higher. Let's continue. So uh, next one, male students studying philosophy at the University of Cambridge in 2001 numbered 50. So you can use number as a verb as well. The noun numbered and then you put the number there. Okay, last one. The figure for male students studying philosophy at University of Cambridge in 2001 amounted to 50. Or again, totaled 50, right? So these we're using the same two here, and you can use them in there as well. So one thing to note is here this word, the figure, right? So figure has a few different meanings. It can mean shape, but here it just means a number. It's another way to say a number. It's another word for number. Okay, so one thing to really pay attention to. As you know by now, prepositions are really tricky in English. And so here, the figure for male students. Make sure you remember that preposition for, the figure for male students. And I want to I wanna show you one other thing. So there's a very useful word, and it's the proportion, right? Proportion. Now, this word is really high vocabulary, and if you can use it well, it's going to demonstrate your, your knowledge of English. So, but the thing about proportions, we don't use exact numbers. We don't say the proportion is 42 or the proportion is 68. You talk about it in comparison to something else. So right here, like look, we got philosophy, we have male students, it's about 50, and uh, women, it's about 150. So to use proportion here, we would say the proportion of male students was one-third that of female students. Or to flip the sentence around, the number of female students was three times as high as male students. So proportion is a great word to use, but just remember it's in comparison to something, either a different thing or the same thing at a different time, as in before or after. 
Okay, so those are some sentence patterns that you can use and vocabulary that you can use to describe different numbers in a bar chart. Okay, so as you know, IELTS Academic Writing Task 1 is all about looking at charts and describing the data that you see. And a big part of that is going to be comparing numbers. So now what I want to help you do is learn how to talk about numbers in general so that you can use different sentence patterns and higher level vocabulary to do that. Okay, let's go through some different vocabulary and sentence patterns. Now for these, these sentences that I'm, that I'm about to show you, imagine that you're looking at a graph and the graph is describing how many people take taxis versus public transport. Those are going to be the two things that we compare. All right, let's have a look. So, first one, overall, more people preferred public transport than taxis. Okay, so the basic pattern here is more noun verb noun than noun. Right? So more people preferred public transport than taxis. More dogs prefer bacon than chicken. More men prefer basketball than soccer. Pretty straightforward, pretty basic. All right, moving on. Overall, taxis were more popular than public transport. Okay, so pretty similar. Um, you have a noun, were, more popular than noun, right? So pretty simple, pretty similar. Overall taxis were more popular than public transport. Um, overall bacon was, bacon was more popular than chicken. All right, so these are good sentences to have. They're pretty basic level. So to really get a higher score, you want to focus on these sentence patterns. Okay, let's look at the third sentence. Overall, a higher number of people preferred public transport than taxis. Okay, or you could say a higher proportion of people preferred public transport than taxis. Now, if you notice, that's very similar to this pattern over here. More people preferred public transport than taxis. The only real difference is that you're changing this word more into a higher number of or a higher proportion of. And just that little shift like that is going to take your vocabulary level up that much higher. Let's move on. Overall, the proportion of people taking public transport exceeds those taking taxis. So now we're moving out of that basic more than comparison, right? Now we're talking about we're using the words exceeds or is higher than or dwarfs. If you can get this word dwarfs or this word exceeds into your, into your answer, that's a really high level vocabulary. And so here we say overall the proportion of, and the same way here we say a higher number of, you can do that here too. You can say um, the number of, you can say the number of people taking public transport is higher than those taking taxis. That works as well. Okay, final one. Overall, people taking public transport outnumbers those taking taxis. And this is, this is again, a much higher vocabulary, vocabulary word than the rest. And if you, if you notice it, it's really a difference between linking verbs and action verbs. Outnumbers, dwarfs, exceeds, these are better, these are higher level vocabulary because they're action verbs and not linking verbs. Okay, let's talk about opposites. When you're comparing two things, you can often switch the subject and the predicate if you change what's in the middle. Let me show you what I mean. So overall, more people prefer public transport. We can also say overall, fewer people, fewer people preferred, and now we change this to taxis than public transport, right? So we change some words in the sentence, but it means the same thing. The, the meaning of the sentence is the same. So more we change to fewer. Now here we can do the same thing. We can just say 
less popular, right? The noun was less popular than the other noun, right? Over here, overall, a lower number of people prefer public transport, or we can say a lower proportion of people preferred taxis than public transport. Uh, and here we can say overall the proportion of people taking public transport um, exceeds, so we can change that to surrenders to. We could change this to is uh, lower than or is smaller than. It's going to depend on the context of the data on the graph. And here we can say change dwarfs to falls short of. Right? So the, the, again, these words fall short of, surrenders to, these are the higher level words because they're action words. They're very descriptive in, in the way they're written. More numbers. So now we're going to continue talking. This is an example chart we got here. This is chocolate bars sold in South Africa and it's by millions of bars and it goes from zero to 50 million bars. And at the bottom here we got name brands of bars. We have Mars Bar, Snickers, Lint, Crunchy, and Kit Kat. And these are all you know famous brands of, of chocolate bars and how much they've sold. So I'm gonna go over some sentence patterns to describe how to talk about these numbers in multiples of each other. Now, for all of these sentences, I'm talking about Snickers and Mars. And as you can see, Snickers sold 20 million and Mars sold 10 million, right? So that's an exact multiple. S Snickers sold twice as many as Mars. Let me show you how that works. So first off, and this is probably the most basic one, Snickers sold two times as many chocolate bars as Mars. Right? Really basic, really simple. Um, Snickers sold two times as many as Mars. That's important, right? This, this as many as is very important for that. Let's move on to the next one. It's almost the same, except we're using a higher level vocabulary word we're using here twice. And as you know, twice means two times, right? So Snickers sold twice as many chocolate bars as Mars. Now here's a, here's a caveat, twice we have, we can say one time, we can say two times, right? Or we can say once and we can say twice and these are higher level vocabulary words. But there's no word, well there is a word for three times, we say thrice, except people stopped saying that a hundred years ago. We don't really use that word anymore. So if you're going to say two times, you can say twice. If you're going to say one time, you can say once. But after that, you've got to say five times. 10 times, 100 times, okay? Let's move on. So these are, these are basic, these are simple, grammatically correct. You can use them, but again, if you want to score higher, you want to pay, spend more time practicing these sentence patterns. Okay, Snickers sold double the number of chocolate bars in comparison to Mars, right? So same, we're talking about the same data in a different way. Snick, Snickers sold double the number of in comparison to Mars. You could also say um, as Mars, double the number of chocolate bars as Mars. It's a little simpler. Or you can say as compared to Mars, right? So those are all the same, they mean the same thing, just a little bit of variation. If you, if you vary your vocabulary, that's going to display how well you can, you can use English. So again, so double, the same way twice, right? We've only got two words for twice. We've got a few more words for double, or that kind of word, right? So we have uh, double, triple, quadruple, quintuple, that's five. And then there's sextuple and septuple, but those are very uncommon words. We don't really use those, those much. So if you're going to get past five, then you're just going to want to say five times rather than try to say quintuple or sextuple. Okay. So moving on, Snickers sold more chocolate bars by a ratio of two to one. 
Oh, and I should add here, than Mars, right? So you need to compare two things, than Mars. And so again, so now we're two to one, right? That's a ratio of two to one. Now you can change this to four to one, five to one, 162,000 to one. You can put any number in here, and you could put any, any number in here, but it's gonna get complicated. The most common way we talk about this is two to one, three to one, five to one. Okay, last one. The number of chocolate bars Snickers sold outnumbered the total amount of chocolate bars Mars sold by a ratio of two to one. Now, as you can see already, this is in a longer sentence. It's a more elaborate sentence. Um, so the number, you have to say the number of chocolate bars Snickers sold, and you have to say um, chocolate bars Mars sold. You have to say that chocolate bars Snickers sold, chocolate bars Mars sold. You have to say that twice. And again, by a ratio of two to one. Now here you can say three to one, five to one, six to one, the same as in up here. Okay, I wanna add one more here. And like I was saying before, if you can use action verbs, I mean, in writing, in speaking, that's just gonna level up your English. So let me give you a really great one. You can say outsold, right? So this sentence is longer than the rest. Let's make it a lot simpler. Mar uh, Snickers, Snickers outsold Mars, right? Snickers outsold Mars, and then again, by a ratio of two to one. Then you add that bit at the end. But if you use outsold, that's a very, very high level word. That's a very good vocabulary word to use. Okay, so I wanna point out something so that you can see it, so that you can avoid it. It's a common mistake people make. So when we're comparing things, we compare one noun to a second noun. That's what we're doing. So here we say Snickers sold double the number of chocolate bars in comparison to Mars. That's a good sentence. That makes sense. But I want to show you something. We could also change this to twice the number of chocolate bars. Or we could say five times the number of chocolate bars. That's okay. We can say that. But we've got to make one crucial 